lot of gray, a full beard, and I wasn't looking for Elvis. What did he so tell Elvis you he was out. Elvis? That happened in January of uh, 89, I mean 79, I'm sorry. And uh, we, a lot of suspicious things had been happening around us. He would get phone calls that he would, you know, late at night that he couldn't explain or he wouldn't explain. Uh, people would come to the door and he would go outside and talk to them and then, you know, he uh, wouldn't tell me who they were or wouldn't introduce me. And so I thought that there was another woman and I told him to leave. I didn't want to be with him anymore. And so he said, I can't lose you, so I'm going to have to tell you the truth. And I'll never forget his words. It was, baby, I'm Elvis Presley. I did not die. I faked my own death. You must have been very skeptical at first. What convinced you that he oh, really I... was Elvis Presley? Well, I, it was a lot of things, a million little things, but the one thing that, that convinced me, I guess, more than anything was when his father, Vernon Presley, died. This man was just beyond grief. He was physically and mentally sick for six months after it, and no one could put on that kind of grief. In what, in what specific physical ways did he convince you that he was Elvis Presley? Well, he had several scars, and you have to be a fan of Elvis's to know about the scars that were on his body, like on the left side of his nose, he had one where a pair of sunglasses made a scar, and above his uh, right eyebrow, he had one. And Elvis also had two toes on his feet that were grown together at birth. And uh, this gentleman had the same scars and the same disfigurement on his foot. So what were the reasons he gave for faking his death? Well, to me, personally, they were very superficial, but it was supposedly for his health. His fans wouldn't uh, give him any privacy. He couldn't be his own person. He was, um, he felt like all the time he was being taken advantage of because he was Elvis Presley. And he just wanted to see what ordinary people live like and to find love. Where did he say he'd been between his death and meeting you? Uh, well, for six months, they had him in a, in a little cabin in Kentucky. And that was where uh, the physical changes were made, and he kind of learned to not be Elvis, so to speak. He had uh, to grow a beard. He had to get his hair back to its natural color and uh, just physically rest up. And then he was moved to a little town outside of Dallas, Texas. And then he was brought to Atlanta to blend in with a bigger town that was close to Memphis. Did he ever get up there on stage and, and pick that guitar and play? Oh, yes. He, that, that gave him the biggest kick I think that I ever it was kind of like a child at Christmas he would get up and sing and play but he would never sing an Elvis song he would do like Waylon Jennings or Willie Nelson but if that crowd asked him to do Elvis he would say I'm sorry I don't do Elvis <laughs> and he actually lost an Elvis uh, sound alike contest I saw that with my own eyes so I know that he lost it <laughs> and it really upset him you ended your affair with him in 1981 that's right it was, uh, it was a combination of, of a million things that came on top, but the stress and the anxiety that he was going through naturally came back on me, and uh, I couldn't handle it. I could not handle all of the problems and, and the things that were going on, and so I just, I had to get out for my own sanity. Have you heard from him since? Yes, I've heard from him three times. In fact, I just heard from him back at, around Christmas of this year, and he was uh, in Florida, and... I, just the conversation that I had with him, I think he has changed his appearance again. Elizabeth, you can see how some people might think that all this is a little bit hard to credit, a little bit far-fetched. You can't see that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I definitely can. And, but you've also got to understand that you're just hearing a capsule of the whole story. When I, I wrote a book, and it's called Elizabeth and Elvis, and that, in that book, I do have documentations, I do have the proof, and, and all of this, and so the people, his fans, are going to have to read this book to be able to figure out if I do have proof or whatever, and then make up their own minds. Elizabeth, have you kept any mementos of your time with Elvis? Yes, I did. One, more especially, that's very... It's a card that he sent me. And it's just a puppy, and it says on the inside, I followed you home. Can you keep me? I hope so. Love you, Elle. That's very impressive. We have to go now, but thank you very much, Elizabeth Prince. And they will carry on because...